to the Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julia Zamora. Susie called the Bloomers in the Garden hotline and asked a good question about poison ivy. We'll explain what to do if you battle this noxious weed in our first segment. Aaron texted the Bloomers in the Garden hotline and asked about controlling dead nettle growing in his yard. We'll tell you all about it in our second segment. Greta called the Bloomers in the Garden hotline and has a drainage issue around her garden and roses. We'll explain how to make a French drain in our third segment. A listener from North Jersey has roots embedded in her wood siding and her patio furniture is covered in a black soot. We have some answers in our fourth segment. Soil is the solution. Great gardens and landscapes start with great soil. Listen to what the building blocks for great soil are in our final segment. So stay tuned. We'll be back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 915-3 contains five micronutrients which are designed for azaleas and evergreens to provide the proper nutrients and producing stunning green leaves and essential new growth while protecting the plant from damaging insects for up to eight weeks. Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food contains 9% nitrogen for green growth, building bigger stems and leaves, 15% phosphorus for root growth and increased flower production, 13% potash to promote vigorous growth so plants are better able to resist disease and cold. The micronutrients are the icing on the cake to enhance further growth, Strengthen and beautify color. Tired of seeing your plants prematurely drop their leaves, the flowers disappear? Fertilums Azalea Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 915-13 contains an easy-to-apply insecticide that keeps your azaleas and evergreens looking great all year long. Those hungry insects do not have a chance. Apply in spring before bud sprout and continue throughout the season as indicated on the label growing guide. Fertilums Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 91513 with micronutrients is a must for the passionate Azalea and Evergreen grower to help produce that beautiful abundance of color and fantastic fragrance everyone will love. So next time you visit your favorite garden center, pick up Fertilums Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic and expect to have the best looking shrubs in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Susie calls the Bloomers in the Garden hotline, and you can too. She had a question about battling poison ivy. Here, listen to her call. Mr. Schroeder, Susie calling. I have a quick question about how to get rid of poison ivy. Um, and when to do it, when it's actively growing, or I still see the vines, there's no growth on the vine yet. Should I try to eradicate the poison ivy now before the growth or wait for the growth? Thank you. Bye-bye. 
Bye-bye, Susie. Well, we have an answer. Mm -hmm. You can do both. But first, if you see the vine, cut it at ground level. Put yourself, uh, get some gloves, Mm -hmm. get your shears out, and go ahead and cut them at the ground level. That will kill anything. Like we had a cryptomeria. Mm -hmm. Anybody out there knows how fast cryptomeria grows? They grow really fast. It was probably 35 to 40 foot. Mm -hmm. And at the top of it, all these leaves were growing. And I got close to it and I said, leaves of three, leave it be. It was poison ivy and it was all the way at the top. The roots were coming right along the trunk and growing up it like a trellis. Mm -hmm. And the way that we controlled it is that when it was dormant, like your poison ivy is now, we cut it at the base all around and it killed the top out and we just kept after the bottom and that here's what we did. Here's what we used. A product from Bonide called Sucker Punch. (laughs) Yeah, we we were hoping for a sound effect. Come on, Sam. Uh, We didn't tell him, though. (laughs) Anyway, Sucker Punch is something that alleviates... Suckers. Amazing. What's a sucker, Julio? Can, can I, like, without any preparation, yeah, ask preparation. you what that is? Yeah, sucker is like a, a, a growth that's coming out of the oh, sides of the plant. I thought it was somebody that you take advantage of. <laughs> yeah, anyway, too, right. <laughs> um, so this comes out from the ground, right. from the roots, and a lot of right. times there are certain plants that have suckers. Uh, apples, like, will grow up with suckers yeah. all the way around it. Yeah. Um, a lot of fruit trees will. Yeah. My worst one is I have a bald cypress. Oh, yeah? That one? Yeah, not yeah, happy not with happy the suckers that, that are growing oh, yeah. there because they grow these things are like knees. Oh, my gosh. They're giant. Anyway. Yeah. Great myrtles think, do that, think, too. And there you go. Yeah, another one. So you spray sucker punch mm. at the base, and that will stop it from growing the suckers that you're trying to control. Yeah. Now, if it was actively growing, mm-hmm. and again, I just want to be clear. This is during the dormant time where it's growing up something and you can actually get your shears in there without having the leaves get all over you. And then you also want to wear gloves um, that you can cut them at the base of the ground. But you've got to be ready to use sucker punch. But if you don't get to it and it starts coming out, and remember, leaves of three, let it be. That means that it's poison ivy. Mm -hmm. Um, There is monide brush killer 30 bk it's actually brush killer bk 32 Mm -hmm. it is a poison ivy and oak killer and aaron if you're looking it aaron is pointing to it if you go to our youtube channel and subscribe please and ring the bell ding ding and then uh (laughs) you'll see exactly what we're talking about now that is a concentrate and you'd mix that with water and you would spray that and i would do it probably every couple of weeks until you see that it's dying um, and then there's also just a ready to spray uh, poison ivy and oak killer from Bonide. It's uh, in that like Windex type bottle, and you just spray it with that. Works real well, but you have to be careful not to spray it on your ornamental plants. And that's the beautiful thing about cutting it back at the ground and then spraying the sucker punch, that that way it's not going to hurt the ornamental plant. Yeah, that's great. So yeah. it's a good thing. Good thing. So, Susie, I hope you understand what we're saying. So in your question, you asked, should I do it now when it's dormant? And the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to spray sucker punch so that it doesn't grow uh, from the uh, from the ground and from the roots and start all over again. Mm-hmm. And then if you don't get to it and it starts pushing out leaves, you're going to use poison ivy and oak killer when it's actively growing. And, again, there's different types that you can use. Um, again, that Bonide has a good one, Brush Killer BK32, and Poison Ivy and Oak Killer works very well, um, but you just got to be careful around your ornamentals. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Julio, wow. anything to add? No. Did, have you, are you allergic to uh, yes. Poison Ivy? Yes. Oh. Are you really bad? Carl, my son. Oh, really? I, oh, he'll, he'll, it, it's kind of gross because he'll come in. Uh-huh. And from working on landscapes and stuff, he'll get it, and the actual he'll blister up and they'll ooze. Yeah. And he's got, like, paper towels, and he's got... Oh, it, oh Pretty bad, huh? Yeah. And that... Uh, he could wear gloves. Yes. <laughs> uh, actually, <laughs> we got new gloves in. Uh-huh. Did you see them? They're like yeah. sleeves. Oh, yeah? 
Oh, they they go up to your armpit. No kid. Yeah, and that so the first uh, section is like right. a regular glove. Right. Goes up to your wrist. Okay. And then sewn onto it is this elastic. Well, it's more of a, a cloth sleeve, uh-huh. and it has an elastic up at the top, so no it goes all the way up so over your tight. bicep. So it's tight. No. Oh no. No no no. It's, it's not tight. Not tight. Oh okay. Comfortable, easy Comfortable? to wear, really? but again, around poison ivy and yeah, around yeah. other things, no bugs, no mm-hmm. poison ivy. Right. I mean, we're going to talk a, a little bit about nettle. There's stinging mm-hmm. nettle, which is a nasty weed. Oh, yeah. I hate that. Mm-hmm. Just to get that on the farm. Oh, oh. <laughs> Another one. It's like you're getting pins and needles times oh, 10. Man. Anyway, wow. that, that's, a different, that's a different segment that's coming right. up. <laughs> so again, poison ivy, you can control it. Mm-hmm. Just have to be careful you don't get it. There you go. And that... Uh, it's something that to keep after. You don't mm-hmm. just, it's not just one and done. Mm-hmm. All right. A lot of the products we talk about are, are usually two applications or more. All right. We'll be All back right. in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Are you looking forward to a spring of vibrancy while using the best organically approved growing media for your annuals and vegetables? Coast of Maine's Sprout Island Organic Seed Starter has been created to set a diverse culture, ideal for germinating seeds and root cuttings. Created using the best ancient composting techniques and new age mixing devices, Sprout Island Organic Seed Starter gently combines kelp meal, worm castings, mycorrhizae, perlite, and sustainably harvested peat moss, establishing the most desirable setting to enhance new plant growth. Coast of Maine's Sprout Island Organic Seed Starter is available at these local retailers, or visit www.coastofmaine.com to locate one near you. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's Greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Our very own folks right here in the studio, Aaron Thompson, surprised us and actually texted the Bloomers in the Garden hotline with a weed problem. Here's his text. 
See if I can do my best impression of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Help! <laughs> I'm about to lose it. I got rid of the crabgrass, but now purple dead nettle is sprouting all over the place. Granted, it adds color to my yard, but in all the wrong places. Any advice? <laughs> that didn't sound like him. <laughs> Are you sure that was him? Buddy? I think it was. Think? I, but uh, I don't know. Do you have a cold or anything? <laughs> no. Aaron, thank you. Julio could not figure out who Aaron was. No, I could. It took about it took about five minutes. I'm like, say the name Aaron real slow. Aaron. <laughs> and then finally, it's like Aaron. He's standing right next to you. I, I put in a text message, longtime contributor. I know. <laughs> from Berlin. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, All right. <laughs> dead nettle, purple dead nettle. It's, it's a weed found in, uh, it, it's all over. It can be in the landscape. It can be in the middle of the lawn. And you'll note it has, uh, it, nettle is also like lamium. Mm -hmm. Like right. lamium is the Perennial. ornamental version. And that it's, I don't know, do you have it all over? You, you've got to talk about it. Yeah. Um, Is I it got in it, your lawn? Or it's in it my in? lawn. I've even got it on stumps of old trees that have been cut down. Really? Like it's, it's all over the place, sprouting out of nowhere. Wow. So it, when you'll, you'll recognize it when I describe it here. So it's got a coarse leaf. Mm -hmm. It will grow a little purple flower head. And that it's, it, it's not ugly you know it could be like a ground cover if you know <laughs> yeah. if you wanted it but the thing what it does is everywhere a stem touches the ground it roots or rotting tree stumps or different areas so it spreads and spreads pretty quick um easy to control though easy to control is it in wet areas is it yes. wet back there i have a pond back there also yeah. There you go. There, that's it. So it likes, and it grows in, it can grow in full sun. It can grow in shade. But the good news is, is that it's easy to control for one. And also it's an annual hmm. where it sprouts and grows over winter. And it sprouts in the, in the fall. And then it grows in the spring. And usually by summertime, it's gone. Hmm. And that, but. It's very conspicuous when nothing else is growing, you know, when the grass hasn't really started yeah. growing yet or anything else, and you see it all over yeah. the place. Sore so, spot. So, good. <laughs> <laughs> you did you have plenty of time yet, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know the leaf mulch that I have covering my lawn. I knew, <laughs> I'm supposed to pick up the sticks and everything else that fell. Uh, you're heading yeah. to the thatch later, Yeah, right? it's, it's uh, anyway, <laughs> that's our own problems, okay? <laughs> so the issue again with, with this purple sprout on the top, uh, that that's where it's going to flower from. It will die back usually when we hit summertime and it gets hot. But it will drop its seed, and it will come right back the following fall. So the key is is getting rid of it before it drops its seed, hmm. and that's what you need to do. So yeah, it does die back, but again, you're just going to have it again because again, it's you know birds and the bees. It's the whole thing. They they <laughs> they want to reproduce, and they want to put out more seed, so it becomes a thicker and bigger problem. I just read that it's actually a pollinator also. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Early of, bumblebees and, and yeah. bees you'll see on it. I want to attract those them to the yard. I just don't. <laughs> you, know <what? laughs> you know what I mean? Like, ah, so, you know, you're all warm and fuzzy until yeah. you find something you don't really like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You see well, what I did Welcome to the there. club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm all organic, but I want it dead now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I get it. I get it. Uh, so, anyway, you can use a basic spray Weed and feed, not weed and feed, weed killer. So broadleaf weed killer will control it. Um, our favorite is Weed Beater Ultra because you can spray it when it is colder. Yes, cold you weather. Can cold, like now. And yeah. again, like we talked about, that this comes and grows during the winter time and in early spring when it's cold. And that that's the perfect plan. So perfect. use Weed Beater Ultra from Bonide. It will work at 40 degrees where other weed controls don't. It does have some of the typical ingredients like 2,4-D that you'll use in other types of weed control, 
But this product is exclusive to being able to work in cold weather. Excellent. Cold weather. Mm -hmm. And again, make sure that you get it before it goes into flower. Mm -hmm. And you can spot spray this because it's pretty obvious where it's growing because that purple just you know, basically says, oh, here's a flag. Here I am. Come and get me. <laughs> and again, it's just the, the the way that all weeds are, like, again, when I see people that think it's so cute that their kids grab the dandelions and blow the dandelions and send those little, like, you know. Thousands. <laughs> yeah, it's seeds. like, oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> right. Well, I do like it, actually, because I know they're coming to me next year for product to control their dandelions. Right. So, <laughs> you like that? Uh, yeah, I actually, in a way, it's, you know. Keep but blowing at that. <laughs> and the off radio, I do like it very much. <laughs> On radio, oh, I hate those things. Uh, that's but, a circle uh, of life there. Yeah. Circle yeah. of life. Uh, yeah, that's exactly good. That's exactly right um so are you going to spray it or are you just going to cut it what do we do <laughs> i don't know i really don't know i want to i want to be kind to the atmosphere i definitely you want to be kind to the atmosphere yeah. that means that he wants weekends off so he doesn't have to deal with it <laughs> <laughs> I want to go the organic route. The maybe. organic route. Oh, really? <laughs> All I right. So here's know. what you have to do: know. you have to make sure you keep cutting it down so it never flowers. And and so with the flowering, um, yeah. how often? Um, or I, I would say, what's the time frame from the the moment that they sprout up to the time that the seeds drop? How much time do you think? Well, they'll I sprout have? and fall, and that they come up and that they'll die back and say, we'll call it early July. Okay. And that, but the time is, is that they drop, you know, they send up that flower and they're, they're dropping all those seeds. Okay. Um, you know, and so it's that whole math thing where one flower and one plant will drop how many how seeds many, right. yeah, and then you're battling all yeah. of that next yeah. year. Compounded. Yep. So, you know, if you do cut it back and never let it go to seed, mm -hmm. it's easier to spray. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you know. you're right. So uh, your kids need to get a little older. Yeah. You know? Get out there and spray them weeds. That's right. Yep. 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 Anyway. Well, thanks for the advice. I appreciate yeah. it. No problem. <laughs> we oh, understand. Goodness. We understand there's only so many hours in the day. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Make if you guys good. out there have any questions about any weeds in your lawn or in your landscape or in your garden, let us know, and we'll tell you what to do. We're going to be back right after this in our next segment. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Do you think you have insects eating away your nice, beautiful lawn? Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below is the product for you. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below not only controls chinch bugs, which is a surface feeding insect, but also controls grubs, which is a subsurface feeding insect. It does it all guaranteed. When most homeowners see their lawn turning brown in the summer, they think grubs. Damage from the larva, of Japanese beetle. But in many cases, it could be chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are hard to see because they are so small and you'd need to get down on your hands and knees to see them. If you misdiagnose your problem, Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below has you covered. The product will control both chinch bugs and grubs. This summer, control your pest problems with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. It also may be used in flower beds on landscape ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below will also control crane fly larvae, ants, mole crickets, sod webworms, bill bugs, and many more. Your property will be pest free with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below and expect to have the best looking lawn and landscape in the neighborhood. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. 
Bro makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Cole, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Greta, a listener in Philadelphia, called the Bloomers in the Garden hotline, and she is having a drainage problem near her garden and roses. Oh, boy. Hey, why don't we talk to Greta and listen to her call? Yeah. Hi, this is Greta Woodbury. I just called about the pooling in my rose garden of water because my, um, my garden is slanted. So I was just wondering, how can I stop the water from pooling? I've done a lot of stuff. I've done sand. I've done dirt. But nothing seems to work. Should I move it? Or can, I, can you let me know what I need to do? Thank you so much. Sweetie. Wow. <laughs> well, yes, we can help you. Yes. Uh, you need to put in a French drain. Mm-hmm. I learned something this week. I hope. Okay. I did. Wow. I, that, I always thought French drain meant uh, foo foo foo. If you put in the French drain, <laughs> you sound pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. I almost sound like Aaron, a Frenchman. <laughs> uh, anyway, but it turns out the French drain. Uh-huh. Good old American know-how. Yes, sir. Oh, maybe it was British. <laughs> no, yes, absolutely. Yeah. A farmer, mm-hmm. okay, Henry French, okay. There you go. Not only a farmer, but he was a judge. How oh, about that? Huh? <laughs> maybe that's how he knows. But a law in is like you have to use French in any of these dreams. Anyway, that uh, he is the one in Concord, Massachusetts, and he helped to popularize the idea of creating a drain for wow. excess water around your crop in order to prove the yield and stop flooding. Mm. And Greta, this is what you need to do. There you go. Okay. You need to dig a trench <laughs> where that water is gathering. And you need to pitch a pipe that's inside. And they sell these things where they're already wrapped in like a sediment reducing uh, fabric. And it's like a big, long tube. And you're going to lead that to, think of a 55-gallon drum. And to be honest, being that I'm on a little bit on the lazy side, no comments, Aaron and Julio, Uh uh, (laughs) that I would just dig a pit and just fill it with stone. And that where as long as it's not near your garden, it can, look, it can... In a hard rain, it can overflow that area and just go across. It generally won't happen much because, again, it's going to be the size of that 55-gallon drum and that you're going to have the hollow pipe that's going to fill with water, and that's going to collect water, and that it's still going to perk underneath because in this pipe there's perforated holes in the bottom. So you're just drawing it away from your roses, from your garden. It's a lot of work. It is. But... It's not hard to do. It's digging a trench that you. this pipe is going to be probably about six inches around. If you can dig it deeper, if you can dig that down so it's about a foot in the ground and then let it collect in that pipe and lead to that pit or you can make the do the 55-gallon drum and have it collect in there. But honestly, if you do, uh, if you do stone, make sure you're doing a coarse stone like a three-quarter inch driveway stone would be good. And the bigger that hole, 
the better that's going to be. So get your nephew, get your, uh, you know, your kids or your, <laughs> said, I need a little help. The kid next door, tell him, you know, pay him a little bit of money. Because mm-hmm. if you're going to have this done professionally, we're talking about three to five grand. Wow. Where it's all labor intensive. It's not like this is a genius thing. You know, it's genius to think of it, but it's not something that's hard to do. And again, you're trying to draw that water from where it's puddling near your roses and have it drain to a different spot. And you'll do that by just trenching and then putting in that pipe that leads to that pit or that 55 gallon drum. And that again, that's all you need. And that that will get rid of most problems. Uh, you probably have compacted soil. And you mentioned in the call that she's done everything. everything you know, yeah. she had mentioned in, a, I think she called a second call, mm-hmm. mentioned that she's done everything. Like she's done organic yeah. matter. She's done, you know, things to put into her soil to make it perk better. Doesn't but work. this is something different. This is where water must be coming from a different area. Mm-hmm. So, again, collect it in the French drain that draws to the open pit. And that you want that pipe covered by at least a foot because you don't want it on the surface of the soil because it's really, you want it to go in. And then the other thing is when you cover that, also cover that with that same three-quarter inch stone. Mm -hmm. You don't want to fill it in with dirt because then you're going to plug up those holes on the bottom and it's not really going to work the way that you want it to. So again, it's, it's almost like a lasagna. You dig the, dig the hole first and you dig the trench. Dig the trench, dig the trench. You're going to want to cover it by a foot. So that means you're at least 18 inches down. Go go two feet. Then that way, you put in about six inches of stone. Then you put the pipe in. And again, the pipe has holes. So you're going to want to put the holes facing basically down. Because if that way, that it will rise from the bottom and fill that pipe and carry it away. So even... You don't want to wait for it to get six inches deep in the hole. You want it to go early. So, again, lasagna, two foot deep, six inches of stone, pipe, fill it in on top with stone, have that pipe lead to that pit that I'm talking about. I'm talking, don't skimp. Three, four feet by four feet, fill it with stone, and then you really will have success. If you're doing, again, you're thinking about a 55-gallon drum. We all know what a 55-gallon drum looks like. You're going to want to put that, and it's not going to be up and down. It's actually going to be on its side. But that's the size hole that you want to make that's your pit. And and like I said, I don't really care if you use a a 55-gallon drum or not. If you fill that with stone, and the deeper and, and bigger that you make that field... I said field, right? Hold that thought with stone. Yes, it is the same idea as the drainage field for a septic. And what you're doing is that you don't have, you have you have rainwater and you have water from the roof or you have water that's coming from your neighbors and you're just getting it away from your garden. So again, it's the same con- the same concept. Keep it simple. Don't overthink it. And you'll have success. But don't skimp on the holes, whether it's the trench along the edge of your garden or where that that, po- that pipe leads to. Don't skimp in the size of your hole. Anything to add, Julio? Well, wow, that's a great strategy because she wanted to move that rose and now she – because she's still going to have that water coming through. Yeah, it's not like it's going to – just still yeah, going to be there. still going to be there, yeah. And then even if she puts it on the other side – yeah, still I mean, now do we just increase the size of her garden? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Yeah. If you have any questions, make sure you call the hotline. Julio, what's that telephone number? Hey, six, ah! 609-685. I got it. 609-685-1880. Ah, That's right. That's that. the hotline. That's yes. the number to call. Ask Aaron. <laughs> All right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. 
Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with their number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. A listener called the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. She has what sounds like roots still embedded in her wood trim and stained patio furniture. Listen to her call. Good morning. My name is Shilda Stewart. I live in East Orange, New Jersey. I'm calling about the tendrils. I guess that's what you call them, the things that attach themselves to your house when they crawl up your house, the vine. It left a whole lot of black things there on the side of the house. I want to know if there's something I can use in order to loosen those up so I can get them off without taking the paint off. Also, what can I use to clean my white lawn chairs? They are moldy. And is there a certain chemical or something that I can buy from, say, Home Depot that might be able to take that off? Um, I hope you can give me the answer to these questions. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, oh, boy, I tell you. tendrils in tendrils. the wood. Uh, honestly, it's it's basically root hairs that are left in that wood, and it's it's beyond what our show <laughs> does. I mean, because that becomes a carpentry issue more and a painting issue more than it is anything that we can do. Uh, question is, is like how long has it been there? Is it still that the roots are still um, turgid from the uh, moisture that was in the plant and in the vine that you took off? There's a good shot that it's gonna they're gonna dry up and it won't be an issue. Um, honestly, a good painter could tell you, yeah. you know, because <laughs> again, it, it becomes where he has to sand them out, yeah. and then and then paint. Yeah. That's a possibility. Mm-hmm. As far as the stained patio furniture, that's easy. Power, you got to power wash it. It's the best way to move that grime. But the question is, is where did it come from? You know, um, we have said for years now, since the spotted lanternfly has been uh, around, or even before, that honeydew is the cause of much of the black soot that coats patio furniture and siding. And 
it's not from the plant. It's not from the plant. Um, I'm going to put Julio on the spot. Uh, Julio, <laughs> yes, uh, in your uh-huh. wise years of gardening and experience, what is honeydew? Honeydew is when the uh, insect uh, leaves a little uh, poop. <laughs> so what did you say? I'm sorry. Could you say it louder? Uh, number number two. <laughs> number two. <laughs> yeah. On this, when he goes to the bathroom. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's right. You're, you're such a good man, Willie. You uh, don't want to say yes. It's it's bug crap. Uh, yeah. Okay, it, it's told us. Sorry. Yeah. And what happens is that things like aphids and, like we mentioned, spotted lanternfly. Spotted lanternfly are like just disgusting. Yeah, worst. And that where like the concern is with spotted lanternfly, they evidently have an issue where they have to go so much that it coats the leaves of the plant to the point where it no photosynthesis takes place and it hurts the plant underneath whatever's underneath it gets coated mm. uh and it happens with other things like a lot of times like before spotted lanternfly people would say it's like oh these ants they're le- they're making my plants all black it's like no they aren't yeah. what's happening is things like aphids will do the same thing and that they'll, they'll be on the plant. They'll be in such great numbers that, you know, when they're using their outdoor toilet, that it coats the plant in this black soot and the ants go and eat it. Mm. You'll see bees, like bees will hover around uh, shrubs and, and trees that have this on them and that they do the same thing. They're feeding off of it. So don't really, you know, it's not the bees. Yeah, sure. It's not the ants. Not the- it's the aphids that are on them or the other insect that is massing on them. A lot of times it'll be even scale. Where scale, you're looking on the plant, where are the bug, where are the bug? And scale are like barnacles where they have legs when they're little and then when they become adults, they sucker on like a barnacle mm. and then they don't move and they look like a bump that's just on the bark or on the stem. And these things are sucking the juices out of the plant and they got to go somewhere. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. again, it it's often it's uh, a problem. And that what you need to do is you have to get rid of the insect that's causing that. So next year, after you get in spring, you're going to power wash your furniture. It's going to be nice. It's going to look brand new. Then you're going to check to see what is around and above the patio furniture that could be putting their droppings on to it Mm. and control those insects uh again there's a lot of generic insects we talk about thrins Mm. all the time and what that means for those of you that are new when you look at the active ingredient in the end of the active ingredient says thrin delta methrin pyrethrin that those thrins are one of the best insecticides we have the science is based on organic Let's see that it is chrysanthemum flowers that are very poisonous to insects, but it breaks down in sunlight so fast that you'd almost have to apply it every day for it to work. Where man has taken the technology and made it so that it isn't it is not organic any longer, but is based on organic chemistry and made it so that it lasts longer. It's it, to me. It's a win-win. It may not be uh, technically organic, but it is uh, about as safe as yeah. you can get. That's the thing, Len. It's safe if used properly. Correct. And again, thrin, thrin. You're just going to like delta methrin, yeah. pyrethrin, yeah. and anything that you'll see. You all of a sudden you'll realize that there's only like that's what's everything on the shelf is with a thrin, thrin on it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but uh, again. <laughs> That will control it because, again, it does both contact and residual, not like a, and you don't have to have a systemic where it makes the plant poisonous to the insect and you have to wait for the insect to eat the plant before it dies. This is something that has a good residual and it's a great, great insecticide for both spraying on your plant material, but also uh, putting on your lawn. Mm -hmm. Anything to add, Julio? No, I think she has all the uh, tools to look at. And, uh, oh yeah, I think I think she can solve her problem. The, oh, yeah. the, unfortunately, we can't give her good, uh, 
you know, advice on the tendrils. Yeah, that's not easy. Yeah, and on, on the on the roots that are that are there, um, if they are not disappearing and drying up and shriveling up on their own, uh, it's probably it's going to be oh, a painting project. Oh yeah, so, I, ha- I have those tendrils on my uh, garage uh, wall outside. Yeah, and it, what, gotta, what 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 uh, what did you have growing there? It was a vine. Yeah, yeah, it's just a vine that I tore down and you know left all the marks on it. Yeah, and now I got to scrub it. You know. Yeah, so you're going to do it because it's, it's somewhere metal. you can reach. But yeah. when you're on second floor. Oh, second floor, no. Not me. Not me either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you have any other questions, call the hotline, 609-685-1880. We'll be back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other compost, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Stoffers of Kissel Hill Home and Garden Store, Roristown, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, healthy plants and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger, more bountiful harvests. Garden Tone is simple to use and safe for people, pets, and the planet. No harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added. You can find Garden Tone at Vine Garden Centers. Visit Espoma.com to find a retailer near you. Garden Tone from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm just telling Julio right now on our next subject, I copied a whole section from uh, Penn State. So I won't be using the, the $10 words yes, we're or the $50, $50 words. I'll words. be using the, you know, maybe two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this segment is our favorite. Julio and I like to talk about soil. Oh, well, yes. You know, and it, in, in the lead-in, what we have written is like, uh-huh. you know, we have the dirt on good soil. If you ever call it dirt. <laughs> yeah, really. Dirt's what you sweep under the rug. <laughs> Professor Fisher told me that. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, you know, if you want a good lawn, a good garden, a great landscape, it all starts with well-drained, rich soil at the right pH. pH. We've been talking about pH for the last, the last month. What? <laughs> yeah. You know, you need to know your pH. 
you need to make sure that where the plants that you have growing, like your lawn, it wants to be around six and a half to seven. Don't even ask if you need to lime. You need to lime no matter what your pH is, but you just don't know how much. So just remember that. And again, the pH control, it's the gatekeeper for basically your plants. I don't know. How would you, how would you call it? So it's the gatekeeper. So pH, if your pH is off, Everything your is roots off. don't absorb, your plants can't absorb the nutrients out of the fertilizer, out of the Soil. ground. It's yeah. like all locked up. Yeah. If your pH is correct, then, We're you good. know, it, it's, yeah. a, you know, 10 course meal. Yeah. Wow. So, but uh, having the wrong pH just shuts their mouth mm -hmm. and they can't eat. So <laughs> again, you have to get your pH right. And that's where I would start. You know, organic matter. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about organic matter. Jump in here and, and help me. Yes, organic matter. We use what's called a compost called bumper crop. And it's uh, it's got everything you want to know about everything that the soil needs. So you're talking about kelp meal. You're talking about uh, lobster shells. You're talking about uh, worm casings. Peat, peat moss, peat moss, earthworm casings, earthworm casings right? Casings, yeah. It, yeah. It has everything, everything but the kitchen sink. That's right. And bumper crop also contains what our next topic is. is Which is major. Is right? major. Is major. Um, it has mycorrhiza. Mm -hmm. And that before we go into what mycorrhiza is, we're going to talk about our favorite fertilizer, and that's the line of Espoma mm -hmm. fertilizers because they also contain mycorrhiza and they're all organic and they're safe for Plants, people, and pets. And I think plant. I have that out of order, but <laughs> they are. <laughs> and yeah. and it and it's a beautiful thing where yes. where back in the day when they're you know, organics were kind of new and you're just like, mm, you know, whatever. They don't work real well. And that now they work incredibly well because you used to want to have a long lasting soil a uh, long lasting fertilizer and that it would be chemically controlled by a polymer coating on the fertilizer, and that's still available and I still use it. Mm -hmm. Um, but the organics now are such that they release in that slow method, and it's not like you're just adding more dirt into the soil. So I said dirt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because back in the day, it kind of what it was like. You're just doing a side dressing of this or that, and, and it really didn't do much for the yeah, plant. Yeah. It had to take a long time to work. Mm -hmm. But the Espoma lineup wow. and it, all of the tones – and that, why am I saying tones? You want to harmonize your garden by using a spoma tones. <laughs> Aaron liked it. Yeah, Aaron go. liked it because <laughs> the, the product line that they have, there's holly tone, and that's for your landscape. There's garden tone, obviously, for the garden. There's plant tone, which is for, for us, it's for perennials, and that's what I like it for, herbaceous yeah. perennials. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Again, it, it's if you go to your local garden center and you grab a bag of Espoma, doesn't matter what the first part of it is, tone, it has to have tone at the end. You're going to do your plants a world of good because, again, mycorrhiza is the key. Uh, can I put you on the spot and explain mycorrhiza? Yeah, mycorrhiza is a fungi and it's... Um what it's going to be, it's going to be in the soil at, when you place in, place in the bumper crop, of course. And it's a symbiotic process with the plant roots, okay? So, right. uh, and it attaches so to the attaches plant to root, the plant root right? right? So, and it, and it basically, you know, it's the mouth parts of, I was, sorry, I, I'm visual. Mm -hmm. It's the mouth parts to the plant. <laughs> right. So, so like it, you can't absorb nutrients out of the soil without that symbiotic relationship of mycorrhiza on the root. If you don't have it on the roots, yeah, yeah you're not going to be very successful. Mm -hmm. And that that science is, well, see, every, every year I get older, uh -huh. you know? Oh, yeah. And I think, like, this is new. Right. And it was new. There was a time they didn't know this. No. But, but the thing is, is that in my lifetime, okay, mm -hmm. this is new information that yeah. has been developed, and it's changed the way that we use fertilizers. 
it changes for the environment, less chemicals, less concentration on chemicals, because they know that if they put mycorrhiza in the soil and in around the plant, that it's going to absorb into the plant's root systems and therefore absorb the nutrient value out of the soil. Mm-hmm. Now, so I've got a garden. Mm-hmm. Julio, how, what should I do? Should I, all right, here, I'll, I'll start you off. Okay. I'm going to put down bumper crop and I'm going to put about two inches of bumper crop on the surface of the soil, the surface mm-hmm. of the garden. Right. I'm going to add some garden tone. Garden tone on top. So I put garden tone on top and just okay. distribute it through the whole area. Right. What do I do next? Get your spade out. Okay. okay. And then you're going to go and uh, till the soil where you, go, you know, you plan to your garden bed at. All right. Now, till, how deep should I go? You're going to go at least uh, a foot down. Okay. A foot? A foot, yeah. A foot? Mm-hmm. One foot. A foot? <laughs> yeah. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> Why do I want to go a foot? I, I know the answer. Go ahead. <laughs> you, want, you want to go to a foot because basically you want that nutrient value to be lower. You want to add the organic matter down so that just mechanically it will improve your drainage. Okay? It'll improve your drainage and that it, it's just going to be better all around because your roots don't stay on the surface. You want them to grow deep. Mm-hmm. And then that way they won't have any issues with drought and, right. and your plant's roots are nice and deep. They're a foot under the ground. Right. They don't have any issues when the sun's mm-hmm. beaten down and everybody else's tomatoes are wilting <laughs> yeah, and yours right. are standing like you uh, know, proud little soldiers. That's right. <laughs> and it's because you went deep enough and that mycorrhiza is yeah. in the soil Wonderful. and that bumper crop is in the soil and it's doing what it's meant to do. That's why we go down a foot. That's right. Now, that doesn't mean you don't add fertilizer after you plant. Mm. You're going to do both, and that you heard it here first, folks. Um, I want you to do a little side dressing of fertilizer after you plant, mm-hmm. before you plant, and after you plant, mm-hmm. and your your garden will be great. Wow. And the, the last thing, mm-hmm. you need to change the soil in your containers. <laughs> right. Like if you have combo pots from last year, all the nutrient value has been sucked out of it. Mm-hmm. The actual the, the composition of the and the tilth in that soil is mm-hmm. is gone. gone. Change your soil. There you go. Change your soil because you want to have new potting soil in there. You can't just keep trying to get it by with that same old soil. And then people go, "Oh, it doesn't look right. I don't know what I did." <laughs> and it's not just growing. just please just yeah. use new potting soil and that. Your plant plant. And don't use the garbage that they sell at the grocery store. No. Sorry, Danielle. Too bad. <laughs> that, Poor girl. It's garbage. It oh. because it's so it's they they want the the compacted topsoil and it's oh, cheap. Yeah. Oh, it's ninety nine cents. It must be good. Yeah. They, they even sell it at the dollar store. They do. Yeah, they and want. that's what it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's you can fill a hole with it. Anyway. It gets hard to rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If, if, if you haven't noticed, we're passionate about soil. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're running out of time. We've got to take a break. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. 
Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. Bloomer's in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomer's Home and Garden Center. Bloomer's is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Me and Julio. Uh, We are out of time, Julio. Yes, we are. Yeah, we went long. Yes, we did. Soil. 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 That's key. It's all about the soil. Look, if you have any questions, please call the hotline, 609-685-1880. Leave your Mm -hmm. question, and we will call you back and give you the answer. Yes, we will. (laughs) Listen anytime to Bloomers in the Garden and your favorite podcasting provider, you can listen to us there. Or go to bloomers.com and visit your radio tab. Thank you, Sam. Great job today. And we'll be back next week right here in the garden. We'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden.